Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is a Samsung Galaxy Fold 4. And if you love the idea of one of these, then you may also love the idea of one of these. This is the new ASUS ZenBook Fold 17 OLED. I love this thing, I really do. I wouldn't buy one, uh, at least not yet, because this is a first generation device, and in many ways, it feels like it but it is undoubtedly very cool. And I also think there is a lot of potential here. It does work and it is by far the best folding laptop you can buy. Granted, there are only about two. So Asus may not be the first to market with a folding laptop, but this is not a concept. You will be able to buy this and it is a big step forward compared to what we've seen before. And you know what, whether you love the idea of this or you think it's just a gimmicky stupid toy that's gonna to be too expensive, either way you have to tip your hat to ASUS and some of the other brands out there for genuinely innovating and trying something a bit different. This kind of tech really brings a smile to my face. Now this does have some fundamental problems, which I'll come back to in a second. It's not perfect, as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, but whenever I show this to people, I had a few friends around the weekend, and I got this out, and there's always this kind of three-stage reaction. The first one is, oh wow, look at that, what is it? But then the second part is always, but why? Why wouldn't I just get a laptop or a tablet? Fair enough. But then the third stage, usually after a couple of minutes, is, ooh, actually, that could be good for this or this. It takes people a couple of minutes to realize just how this might actually work for them. But what is this actually good for and how do you use it? Well, let me give you a bit of a rough idea. So you get this nice little uh, carry case in the box with it. So you can have this under your arm like you're a nice professional or a creative sort, whatever you like. You come into the office, you think, okay, let me set up my laptop. You're at your hot desk or you're about to give a presentation. Get rid of that. And it's got a bit of a sort of notepad book vibe to it. It feels quite classy actually. So you'll plonk this down. I do have the keyboard in here, which by default does come bundled in it, but separately. But the important thing is that you can store it in there. But let's put the keyboard to one side for a second. You've got your 17 inch folding tablet two-in-one laptop thing. There you go. So how do you use this? Well, you can just use it as a big old 17-inch OLED tablet, if you like. Hold it in one hand. You could use it a bit like a book, maybe read some documents, check your presentation, that sort of thing. So you can use it like that handheld. Uh, you can also use it, well, as its own tripod, a bit like the Galaxy Fold, as they'd say, in flex mode. Uh, and it will then rotate. There you go. I realize again it's upside down, doesn't really matter, but the cameras are up here and the keyboard will only attach to this bottom side. So you could simply use it in tablet mode like this or you know, like that. But most of the time I find myself using it in one of two ways, either with the keyboard popped onto here, which disables that second half of the screen, saving battery life actually, it gives you about an extra hour according to ASUS, although we'll come back to battery in a second. And then you've got yourself a pretty chunky 12 inch or so netbooky kind of thing. It's definitely not the sleekest thing I've ever seen with these quite chunky bezels and it is a bit thick here with that keyboard on top but it works well and actually for me I've used this on the train or you could use it on a plane as a you know a tray table. It's small enough that you can use this in tight spaces but I'll tell you my favorite way of using this. Pull the keyboard out, pop the kickstand out which is on the back here which is okay, it's a little bit flimsy, this kickstand. And I really wish we had a kickstand like the Microsoft Surface Pro, that's so much better. But it does work, particularly on a, a flat surface like a desk, but if you're using it in bed or on a softer surface, it can fall down a little bit. So then you've got your essentially 17 inch all in one, I guess you could call it that, your tablet. And because this is a Bluetooth keyboard, you can use this right next to it, right in front of it, if you want to do like a laptop or away on a desk somewhere else or in your bed, if you're gonna use this for watching movies or something. And it's a fairly basic keyboard. It feels good to type on actually, the key travel's quite nice, but there's no backlight. Uh, the touchpad's a good size, but it's a bit clacky. It doesn't feel the most premium. And occasionally I find the touchpad just a little bit laggy because it is a Bluetooth connection, but most of the time it's pretty good. And actually this is a really nice setup. And so while initially I had some concerns about how practical this would be to actually use. Once I had it in this setup and started uh, watching some videos and doing some Lightroom editing and just, you know, general day-to-day -day stuff, it all started to click. And then you can just enjoy this beautiful OLED 17-inch display. I had hoped we'd see a 4K resolution, although the Quad HD we get is probably a better balance anyway between sharpness and battery life. I also measured 400 nits of SDR brightness and around 510 in HDR. 
And if you want to be a bit smarter about your multitasking, then click this Screen Expert button. Uh, this little shortcut stays on the home screen. And this gives you quick access to two or three-way split screen. You can save task groups of your favorite apps. And actually, the screen is big enough to make it worthwhile and actually comfortable to have a couple apps side by side. Although this is a plastic screen, flexible plastic, but it's not glass like we do now have on the top layer of the folds and the flips from Samsung. Uh, so you can sometimes see when the light hits it, it has that cheapish, reflective, shimmery, plasticky feel. And of course, we do also have this crease down the middle, which you can see when the screen is off or it's a really dark background and the light hits it just right. You can see the crease. But actually, if I put it in front of you like you'd normally be using it, you just can't tell. It really doesn't bother me at all. And unlike something like the Galaxy Flip, where you're often scrolling your finger up and down across the crease, with this, you're rarely doing this. And even if you are, it's not that noticeable. So actually, the crease is not a big deal at all. Now, design-wise, this both feels kind of classy with its sort of bookish aesthetic, but it's also a bit prototype -y. With those fairly chunky bezels, the thickness, also the one and a half kilogram weight, which isn't terrible for a 17-inch laptop, but it's pretty heavy if you're going to use it like a tablet. There's certainly room for refinement, but I could still absolutely imagine taking this into a meeting and giving a presentation on it, or using it in laptop mode to, as I say, work on a plane, and then using it full screen to watch a movie in a hotel. It is a bit showy-offy, and honestly, you could say as a tablet and a laptop, it's kind of the worst of both worlds, but I still think it has a certain charm. Now, I'm shooting this on the webcam, which is on the side or, well, the top, depending on how you're holding it. Uh, we do also get a IR sensor, so you get Windows face unlocking because there isn't a fingerprint reader, uh, so that is handy. And this is actually a pretty good quality 1080p webcam if I stick my face right up to it. Definitely too close there. It looks pretty good. One thing I am noticing as I'm using this more and more is it's getting quite dirty. The rubber bezels around the edge just sort of pick up hair and dust and the uh, plastic screen is a bit of a fingerprint magnet. I've got a microfiber cloth, I'm trying to wipe it all down, but it's not even doing that much. So very quickly, this is getting a bit grubby, which isn't ideal. Now, being a first generation device, your first thought is probably about durability. Is it just going to break like the original fold did where you could literally peel the screen off? Although that never actually came out to consumers, that was the review samples. But it's a fair question. ASUS say they do test this opening, closing operation 30,000 times for the device to test the durability. So I'm pretty confident it's not going to break. And they do also say if there are any issues with the screen, they will replace it unless you damage it yourself. And you do also have a pretty decent warranty. In Europe, you have two years, one year in America, I believe, and three in China. That's sort of the legal minimums they're required to give. Uh, but actually, if you buy it on a business, apparently you get a longer warranty. So if you do pick up one of these, it might be worth ordering it through a company. Let's talk performance. And inside we have an Intel 12th gen processor. It is an i7, and it does meet Intel's requirements for their Evo certification, but it is also a U-series chip, which is their least powerful at around 12 watts. But it is still a fairly basic Ultrabook level of performance. And as for graphics, we rely on the integrated Intel XE chip with a pretty pitiful 128 megabytes of VRAM. But that's along with 16 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM, and I've also got one terabyte of PCIe 4 SSD storage in here, which actually is the only component you can upgrade yourself if you're brave enough to take this thing apart. Now, performance, I think, is best described as a bit inconsistent. Sometimes it breezes through whatever I'm doing, you know, with Chrome tabs open, a PowerPoint, some Netflix playing in the background, you know, general decent average use case stuff. Uh, but then other times, even basic things like writing this script, writing my notes for this video in a Google Doc, it just started to really lag. It took a couple of seconds uh, to actually catch up with what I was writing. And you can see these orientation changes just take ages compared to any other Android or, you know, uh, iOS tablet. It's a bit painfully slow. Now you can change the fan profile to performance mode if you need to get the most out of it, although that does make the fans whir up to a reasonably loud level. Although most of the time, outside of performance mode, this is basically silent. So yes, it's a first gen device, it's not got the most powerful chip, but I think the biggest issue really is actually not ASUS's fault, it's Windows. How many years now have we been having touch and folding and two-in-one devices, you know, some pretty unique stuff, but Windows 11 is still just not that well optimized for touchscreens uh, or even different unique form factors like this. I mean, take the Surface Duo. Yes, the second one's a lot better, the phone tablet thing for Microsoft, 
but it's still buggy and not many people are buying it. And they canceled the Surface Neo. So what chance do these third party manufacturers have to make a seamless sort of iPad laptop experience? So I wouldn't say performance is a deal breaker. It is underpowered. You do feel that choppiness sometimes and it can be a bit inconsistent, but sometimes I'd say it is smooth as butter. And if you're just doing light office use, you're watching movies, you're you know, doing some spreadsheets, some Google Docs, or just browsing the web, using it as a sort of content consumption device rather than a content creation, then I think you're gonna be perfectly fine with this. It is a bit disappointing this doesn't actually support styluses, styli. Uh, you can use basic capacitive touch pens if they have a rubber point on the end like they would work with any touch screen, but proper styluses would scratch the screen, apparently. But what about battery life? Well, this is a pre-release model, so software updates could improve things, and I've also only had a few days with it, but actually, the 75 kilowatt cell does a decent job, and I've been getting between six and seven hours on average. Asus say you should be getting about nine in tablet mode or 10 in laptop mode when the keyboard is on top of it and turns half the screen off. So battery life is solid, and it should get you through a full day at the office, but it's not exceptional. Although we do get this 65 watt power adapter with a Type-C uh, connector bundled in the box, which is nice. And that connects to one of the two Thunderbolt 4 Type-C ports. That's all you get on this, along with a headphone jack. Although there is also another Type-C on the keyboard, but that's just for charging this. It is a little bit disappointing. There isn't some sort of connection or inductive charging they can do between the fold and the keyboard. Again, maybe next year that would be nice so you wouldn't have to separately charge this. But they do also bundle a Type A to Type C adapter in the box. So altogether, I think ASUS have done a really great job from an engineering standpoint. But there's always gonna be fundamental compromises when you have a form factor like this, at least for now. More materials mean more weight, the hinge mechanism leaves less room for more ports or a bigger battery, and we are limited to the lowest power U-series chips. So as I say, where this could have been a creative's dream, the lack of horsepower, the lack of style support, and the lack of good Windows 11 tablet optimization, for me, keeps the Fold 17 in the curiosity category rather than the must-buy. So, how much? Well, you knew this wasn't going to be cheap, but when it launches later this year, it'll cost you around £3,300. Oof, maybe another reason to wait for Gen 2. But when you consider how far we've come even from last year's Lenovo folding laptop, uh, and also how far we came from the original to the second Galaxy Fold, now we have this, which is legitimately quite good and certainly unique. What I'm most excited for is the second one, the Fold 17 II next year. But what do you think? If you were to buy one of these right now, how would you use it? Let me know in the comments below. And also, if you did enjoy this video, a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.